In today's video, we're drawing a Japanese style Hanya mask. Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video. I'm Daggett, this is Daggett Designs, and in today's video, we're gonna be drawing a Japanese style Hanya mask. Now, I have covered Japanese Hanya masks in previous videos. I'll leave links in the description to those videos as well. However, in today's video, we're gonna be doing a front on portrait style Hanya mask which is something a little bit different and I've got a really cool technique to show you how. With that having been said, let's jump straight into today's video by going to the overhead. All right, everyone, welcome back to the table for another drawing video. We're starting off with a piece of A4 sketching paper. This is just standard sketch paper. I have a mechanical pencil to sketch our design, an eraser in case we should need it. And I've also got my circles template. So this is used for drawing circles. Uh, of varying sizes. We're actually going to be using the main circumference of this to start with. All right, so to start this one off, we want to find the center of our page. We're actually going to start by folding our page in half lengthways, like this. You're going to fold your page in half, and then we're going to find the center of this plane here. So not coming down the page, but coming across the page. And we're going to put a circle in. Now you want to make sure you leave enough room at the top for the horns and enough room at the bottom for the jaw. So we're going to go somewhere right in the middle. And we're going to pop our circle tool down like this. If you don't have one of these, you should get one. They're fantastic for, you know, all sorts of drawing and illustration work. For drawing tattoos, they come in handy all the time. Uh, but you can, of course, substitute this with any sort of round object that you can draw a perfect circle with. Now, once you've drawn your circle, you can go ahead and fold your page in half again. And from here, we can actually start our design. So we're doing a half a page, and then we're going to basically trace that onto the other half of the page to get a symmetrical design. And this is the way I like to create symmetrical shapes with my designs. So I'm just strengthening that circle a little bit. We're going to come down from the left side here. I'm going to drop a line nearly straight down. It's going to come to a slight... Uh, angle towards the right here and you're going to come down to about a little bit down from where your circle ended then you're going to cut down even further on an angle towards the bottom corner of your page when you reach the bottom of the page here you're going to cut straight across the bottom like this all right we're going to start putting in some construction lines now so what i like to do is drop a curve in that comes up towards the circle from the bottom here, like this. And then just underneath the circle, we're gonna put in two smaller curves that follow the curvature of the circle. So one just underneath it, and another one just underneath that, maybe a little bit lower. Create a bit of a gap. All right, from here, I'm just gonna turn my page a little bit to make things easier. We're gonna draw a curved line that starts on the outside of the face, just above where we started our jaw there. And that's gonna come down and then back up towards center or towards our fold. Then you're gonna do another line just underneath this that comes up towards center. And this one will start just underneath where we started our jaw there. And they both curve up towards the center. These are parallel lines. All right, so that's the basic construction for the shape of the head. Now we're gonna start adding in some of the foundation shapes for the details. So we're gonna start in the center where the nose would sit. And you're gonna do a little circle shape like this, but it's only gonna be half a circle. Just remember that the other side of the page is getting half of our details here. Now just off to the left of this and slightly up, you're gonna do another full circle this time. be slightly oval in shape and then just next to that you're going to do another oval shape slightly larger again now just so that we can get placement for the eye i like to come off the end of that oval we just drew and draw a line that parallels the line on the outside here so just straight up and down paralleling that line there and now we can draw in the eye so for the eye we're just going to do an oval that starts on that line it's going to touch this bottom line here and it's gonna come up and around, cutting through our top line slightly, and then back down. 
Now, just next to where we drew the eye, you're going to come up to the nearly the top of this line here, the end of this line. And you're going to drop a long oval shape down towards our nose, like this. And now we can start placing in some of the details for the side of the face here. So just coming up from just above the, this line that we drew and cutting into our head slightly, we're going to come out and around like that. And then from the bottom, we're just going to come down and back into our head shape. This will give us our ear. And then just from the bottom of the ear to the jaw here, you can add another little curved line there to the back of where the jaw will sit. Now just above the ear, you're gonna add an oval shape like this. That's where our horn will come off from. So for now, you can just draw a curve and another curve from the other side of our oval that will give us placement for our horn. And to do our hair, we're gonna have one curve coming across from here to the top of our ear, or the, sorry, the bottom of our uh, line at the ear here. So that's gonna curve around through there. And then you're gonna intersect this with a line from the bottom of the horn roughly, and it's gonna come up towards the center of the head. Like that. All right, so from here, we can actually start adding in some of the details. These are the construction lines. We're gonna go ahead and put in our nose to start with. So this little oval on the outside here, this is our nostril, and this circle here, or the half circle, is the tip for our nose. So what we're gonna do is start with a small loop at the bottom of our oval. And that little loop is gonna come around, down and around the tip of our nose, like that. Then we'll bring a line out, out again to go around our oval, like this. And it's just gonna reach to about there and stop. To do our cheek section, you're basically gonna follow around the oval shape we drew just next to it, following that shape around till we get to this corner here. So we've got this intersecting line here. When we reach that corner, you're just gonna round it off, just curve like that. And then you're gonna do a big W curve, a really elongated one like this, through the center. And when you get to this line at the bottom, you're just gonna follow that around. Just join into it and follow it around. All right, now in doing the eye shape, we're gonna start off this line that we drew, the one that comes straight down like this. Now starting off that line, you're gonna come out with a curve like this. It's gonna round off slightly at the end and it's gonna dip down and to the line that we drew. So this line that comes across the top of the eye, that's gonna dip down and across that line. It's gonna follow it all the way up until you reach about here. And then you can curve it off and back down like that. Now I like to add this little extra bit of flesh under here you don't have to do it. I like to add this little curve here. And then we can pretty much bring our eye shape all the way around, just following our oval like this. On the back side of this, you can just join that up with a little curve line like that. Then you're gonna come in from the outside in this little box here. You're gonna start a line that's gonna come in underneath our eye. And then at the very front of our eye, it can just come out like that, out and down. Now at this point, I like to drop in my pupil. I'm gonna use my uh, circle tool here. If you don't have one, you don't have to use a circle tool. It's not completely necessary, but I do find it's a good tool to have for doing this sort of thing, especially when you want it to look neat and you know really centered. It can help to have a tool like this to do your eyes. So coming into the mouth here, we're basically gonna drop down a line from where our cheek starts. We're gonna leave a little gap and then we're just gonna drop down and forward into this second line that we drew, second guideline. And that's gonna curve off. And towards the center, it's gonna come slightly down. So this here is an S curve right here towards the center of the page. And then it whips back up into another small S curve. Now to actually join that back into the face, come up back up to this line here and just add another little curve in like that. 
on the top of the line that we just drew, we're going to add a top lip. So just coming down with an S curve towards the center again like that. That gives us that top lip shape. I'm going to follow that line up. I'm going to come all the way to where about halfway in this box here. And we're going to loop back around. And then we're going to follow the exact same shape as our mouth. Just coming in, back out, and then towards the chin, you can just loop around and stop your line there. And that line links back into your cheek. From here, you can double up on your bottom lip. So you're basically just following the exact same line, keeping them as parallel as possible, coming around the bottom lip there. And from here, it's a matter of dropping in our teeth. So I like to come up to the top lip here, basically where the top lip joins this second little um, curve line here. And I like to put in a long tooth in that place. You can always vary the teeth a little bit. This is for a very basic uh, generic Hanya mask design. I'll add a curve line coming from there around to center. And I'm gonna split that off into three like this just splitting that off into three teeth on the bottom side you're going to do the same thing i like to come into this little dip here put in my first tooth then i'll add a curve to center and i think across the bottom we'll probably just do two like this now for the tongue on the inside of the mouth, you can bring a line up from the corner created by the two teeth here. Bring a little curved line up. The tongue is gonna to curl back on itself. And then for the inside of the mouth or the side of the tongue here, you're gonna just do a W curve that comes behind our tooth there. All right, what I like to do from here is add in the rest of our jaw shape here. So I like to come around from the top of the ear, just the very top of the ear with a curve, it's gonna match the curve of our eyebrow here. So that's gonna come around from the top of the ear out to the end of our first line for the eyes, like this. And that curve is gonna come back in towards the face, like this. And then it's gonna loop back out and just follow our jaw shape. Now for your ear, you're gonna make that line on the outside nice and solid, like this. For the inside of the ear, you're gonna double up on your top line, bringing it around and down like that. On the inside of that, you can add a couple of smaller curve lines. And then just down where this line for the underside of the eye is, I like to add a little loop. So just coming down and back up into our ear. This bottom part is the earlobe. Okay, coming in just above the eye, there's a bit of detail on the forehead here. There's a curve line that's gonna come in just from uh, where the hair is here. It'll come down and curve back up like that. And then in this space that's in between, I guess where the eyebrow ridge is, I like to put in this little, uh, like a teardrop shape that curves up towards the center. This will be colored solid black and this is actually our little eyebrow. The hair is gonna be solid black on this one so we'll just solid the line up at the top, bring it down and down again behind our ear there. And for our horn, we're gonna detail this the same way that we've done horns on many of our other designs. You're basically going to add a rough exterior to the outside of your line, like that. Come around the base. You can add either a rough line or a smooth line, depending on how you want that to look. And then you can texture the inside of the horn whichever way you like. You can leave it smooth or you can add in these little lines for texture. Depends how you want to do it. Now, believe it or not, our design from this point onwards is really simple. We've done half of our Hanya mask and we folded the page in half. So this is the little secret technique, which I think is really cool for doing any symmetrical style design. But you're going to take yourself a light pad, switch that on and just turn your folded page over you'll actually be able to see your design through the page there. I'll just pump the brightness up a bit. You can see your design through the page. So now you're gonna trace all of your uh, design through to the other side of the page. Now, if you don't have a light pad like this one, 
Basically what you can do is take your design, turn it around and tape it to a window with some light shining through it and you can trace it that way. Or you can also take an iPhone or any other suitable light source, put it underneath a glass table, turn your page over on the glass table and you can trace through there. So I'm gonna go ahead and trace this guy now. Now, once you've gone ahead and traced your design through to the other side, we can go ahead and do the big reveal, unfolding our page to find that you've got a full honey mask drawing. So what's really cool about this method is that you get a perfectly symmetrical design. There might be bits that you'll need to fix up after unfolding it if you're not happy with certain parts of the design and how it lined up on the other side of the page, but you pretty much get a perfectly symmetrical honey mask. Uh, you can also make alterations on purpose to one side so that it looks, you know, slightly different to the other side. But I like to have a nice symmetrical design. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and transfer this guy now to some watercolor paper so that we can go ahead and start painting him. I will see you guys in the next part. All right, before we start painting this one, let's talk about the line work a little bit. I used a 1.25 nib for most of the line work on this one. I wanted to have a nice bold traditional look. I used a brush marker for doing the details inside the horn, just that texturing inside the horns. I used a red fine liner for the rings around the eyes. And these are just small additional details I like to add. I used a 0.5 for the lines around the lips here and on the forehead there. These are just smaller, thinner detail lines. And then I went really fine with a 0.1 and I did all these little wispy hairs. Now these aren't completely necessary and you can totally do these with a larger size nib. I just like these to look really small and fine. So I went ahead and took a 0.1 to do those. Now one more thing before we start painting, the class notes for this one are available to members of my channel. If you're not yet a member and you'd like to uh, join up and support the channel, there'll be a link in the description. So as always, we're using Liquitex acrylic inks to paint this one. And I'll just take you guys through my palette here. I've got carbon black. This is straight carbon black. I've got a medium gray wash, which I've made with a drop of carbon black and then filling halfway with water. I've got uh, yellow orange azo mixed with dioxazine purple. This is to give us a brown color. I've got plain uh, yellow orange azo. I like to call it golden yellow. And I've also got pyrrole red. Along with this, I have two brushes. I've got an inking brush and a blending brush. This is a number five and a number six Taclon synthetic fiber brushes. And I've also got a glass of water, which will just be used to wash the brushes out and help with blending. Now, as usual with my designs, I like to start off with the black shading. So we're gonna go ahead and knock out the large areas of solid black on this one, which is the hair. Now, depending on how you like to do this, I know some people will add some shading to the hair and they'll uh, add some lines to the center of the you know, large areas of hair up here and add highlights and things like that. It really depends on how you want this to look aesthetically when you're finished. I like this to, I like to take the more traditional approach to my Japanese work, or at least I try to make things look uh, traditional. So I like to do the hair on these guys a solid black. Now painting this guy lies primarily in the black shading because you want to create some dimension and depth on this one. Not only that, but I like my honey masks to be uh, usually black and gray. That way the color parts of it, such as the eyes and the mouth, stand out really nicely. And to me, that's a nicer look uh, than a colored honey mask. But of course, you know, everyone's different. So we're gonna come into this area just underneath the cheek on both sides, adding in some of our black ink. And you want to follow the shape of whatever it is that you're shading. So you follow the inside curve of that cheek area. Then take your blending brush with a little bit of water, feather that edge out nicely, and then go on and blend it forward. Now you're going to repeat this process for the section that's on the inside of the corners of the mouth. Uh, I don't like to apply as much black in these areas because we're going over the top of this with red. So I just apply a little bit of black up in the corner of the mouth. And then using a blending brush and a bit of water, just blend that down into the mouth. Now you're going to go in from there another step. So we're going into another layer behind the tongue here. 
I'm gonna do this little part behind the tooth solid black and you'll do that on both sides. And then the section just behind that, or just behind the tooth on the other side, I'll do a little bit of black like this and then blend it forward. All right, now you're gonna come in from either side where the nostrils sit with a bit of black and you'll come in just underneath the cheek here with a bit of black. And this time you're gonna curve in the opposite direction to your cheek. With your blending brush, of course, feather that edge out and blend it on down. You want it to get to white before you touch that line where the lip starts. And same for the little area just behind it. Now from here, we're gonna take a bit of black to the outside of our face here. So just coming across to the cheek, following the shape of our cheek around and underneath the earlobe there. Like that, making sure we have a nice smooth curve. You can feather that out and then blend on down. Now in the very center of the chin, I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of black in sort of a uh, semi-circle fashion. You just wanna do like a little curve of black like that. And then you're gonna blend that out. Now to do our ears, I like to add a little bit of black just to this line that we did coming onto the ear. You can feather it out and then blend your black across like this to a nice gray. You're gonna do the same sort of thing at the top of the ear, just adding a little bit of black to the line and then you can drag that up as you blend it to a gray up and around the top of our ear there. I like to try and leave a little strip of white wherever I'm doing these black areas. Now I'm gonna come in with black from behind each of the eyes in this area just in here. So filling in with a bit of black behind the eye. These will, this will really help the eyes stand out. You're creating a lot of depth here by adding black behind them. And we'll feather that out nicely to a gray and out into the face there. Now we come into this uh, little crook at the front of the eye add a little bit of black and do the same thing. Blending it out and just creating that depth uh, between the eyes and the nose there. And like I said, this depth is going to add a lot when you go to color the eyes in. It'll add a lot of contrast and just add that depth that makes it look three dimensional. You're also gonna come into these little bits at the top of our eyebrow ridge that we did. Add a little bit of black on the inside of them and blend those on down. Just being careful here not to, you know, blend your black into itself too much. You want to sort of create areas of uh, white where the black is broken up. This helps with the readability of the image and I think it also just gives it that traditional feel. I want to take a little bit of my black from the top of the head here, just a very, very small amount across the top of the head there and blending that straight down. Just like that. There's a lot of different ways to black shade our horns. I'm gonna add a little bit of black to the outer line here, like this, and then blend that across. Add a little bit of black to that inside corner, just like we did on the other horn just now. Blend that across. Now adding that bit of black shading to either side of the horn with a slight angle to it is gonna give them a three dimensional look, leaving the center of the horn a little bit more lit and the sides a little bit more in the shadow. Once you've done your horns, that is the end of the black shading. We're gonna go ahead and do some gray wash shading. So we're gonna go ahead and start with our cheeks. So taking some gray wash, which is just our diluted black. And I like to just use my blending brush for this and dip straight into water. This gives you really smooth gradients. So I'm gonna start at the bottom of our cheek and leave a little white gap. And then take some water and just blend that gray wash shading up. And you want it to reach white before 
it gets to where the eye sits there. For these little bits at the sides here, I like to come down with a bit of grey, again, leaving that little strip of white around the edge. And then just blending the edges to soften them into the face. Now from here, I like to take a bit of the grey wash and come in from just underneath this line that we did on the forehead, but you're going to leave that little white gap as you come up and around. Then take your blending brush, or some water on your blending brush, I should say, and blend that down into your eyebrow ridge. Again, reaching white before you actually hit that line. Now, once you've done that on both sides, you can take some gray wash, come into the ridges just behind this, like that. Take your blending brush and just blend that on out straight back into your hair and the top of the head. All right, now to do the area of the nose, we're doing the same thing we did at the bottom of the cheeks, using our gray wash and leaving a little strip of white across the bottom of your nose. And then using the water to blend that up and over your nostrils like this. Now, last thing I want to do with our gray wash here is add a bit of shading to the eyes. Now, we are going to be adding some color to the eyes, so go easy on the black shading. Coming in off the edge, leaving a little white strip. And then blending forward. And you want to get to white way before you reach even that red line. So we've gotten through the black shading and the gray wash shading. Now this you, you could call this a finished design basically with a few little touches, but we're gonna go ahead and add some color. And I'm gonna start with the horns. So we've got our brown here, which is a mixture of dark Zazine purple and yellow orange azo. And we're gonna start layering that over the top of our black shading that we did on the sides of the horn. Then you can take your water with your blending brush here and blend that out to a nice light brown. That way we get a nice gradient from black to dark brown to a lighter brown. And then I'll spin this guy around. I'll do a little bit of our brown over the top, just over the top of our black. And then blend that out and up. Now once you've done your brown, you can wash your brush out and go into some red. We're gonna use red for quite a few areas here. Coming into the corners just behind the eyes with solid red for those little corner areas. We're gonna go on the inside of the ear with a little bit of red like this. Take our blending brush and just blend that out to a nice pink for the inside of our ear color. Now for the inner area of the tongue, you can do red straight over the top of your black shading and you're just doing solid red for that inner area of the mouth behind the folded portion of the tongue there. For this outer strip of the tongue, you're basically going to come down with solid red over the top of your black and gray shading. I like to just leave a little strip of white along the top edge of that fold. And then for the portion in the middle where it's folded over itself, you can pretty much come down each side, leaving that little white strip or that little white gap. The center of it is just solid red, no blending. So just adding a little dot of red and then with your blending brush, just dragging that out to a pink tone. So doing that for the top lip here. And you can do the same thing for the bottom lip. Now in doing the eyes, we're gonna take a little bit of red, go over the top of our gray shading, leaving that little white strip around the edge and blend that just blend that across over the top of your gray shading. Take a little bit of red and just do the same thing coming in from the other side. Leaving that little white strip around the very edge, following the shape of your eye. And then feathering it out and blending it towards the center. 
So once you've done your red shading, I've washed my brush out. I'm gonna go into our yellow orange azo, or as I like to call it, golden yellow. We're gonna do the four large teeth on this guy yellow, the big pointy teeth. So just coming in and painting them in with our golden yellow. And then for our eyes, you're gonna overlap your red right from the edge with your golden yellow. This will give you an orange color going towards the center. Once you nearly hit that red ring, you can just blend the edge of your yellow out around that ring. You can then flip your page around, doing the same technique going over the top of your red with yellow to give you an orange towards the center. And then blending that out towards that ring and just just narrowly missing it, just going right around that center ring. Now that is it for this one, guys. So this is a traditional Japanese style Hanya mask. I really hope you liked the way this came out. I really enjoyed doing this one for you. And that's basically it for this one. So keep up the drawing and I'll see you guys all in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye. If you like the content that I make and you'd like to support the channel, make sure you smash that like button. And hey, while you're at it, check out one of these other great videos.